and why should people vote for you? One of the things that I like to tell people is that I've lived with the, in the, under the conditions created by the people who've held office previously. The legislators, the city councilmen, county commissioners. And I'd like to quote from Booker T. Washington, a black man. He said, a seat in Congress, the state legislature, and the county commissioners, and the city council must not be more important than starting a business wherein lies the prosperity of the people. For in those legislative bodies of government lie the creation of business regulations and taxes that strangle creation of businesses, both large and small. This gentleman said that in 1900, and today it rings just as true as it can. Folks, this is what I want to do as your representative. I want to, cre I want to create the lack of strangulation and taxation on our businesses. I want to remove the burden from what it needs to, from the, from the businesses that are, are having time, a tough time investing and hiring, spending their savings and their earnings. They want a, an atmosphere of someone who knows what it means to earn a wage, to pay a tax, to meet a payroll, and, and to get the people working. There's nothing better than a person that has a job. I used to love to get up in the morning and go to work. There are so many people now in our county, in our city, in our state, that do not have that. And there was an article in the Chieftain about how people are depressed because of that condition. One of the things I want to do is relieve that burden from the people. And believe me, when I get there, I'm going to work as hard as I ever did out at the steel mill, setting national and world records in the, in the production and of steel. Not only the quality, but the quantity. The only guy that came close to me was a Russian with a 200-ton furnace, and I was using a 90-ton. I want to work that hard for my people. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Well, again, I have worked that hard, and I think much the credit of people like Senator Heron and Representative Keith Swarfiger, who are here, I see many of the legislators working hard to address the issues of Pueblo and Southern Colorado. And so I want to continue on that, that, that track record. I have a track record of being on city council that has yielded results, proven results. And so I'm not up here talking to you today about things I will do. I'm telling you from my experience, I will get this accomplished. I served in Iraq in 2003, and I think, well, there are many great things you can do for a nation, nothing in my opinion, comes close to serving in the armed forces in defense of our Constitution and the Americans who reside in this country. I care, I care about Pueblo and the needs of Southern Colorado because I have a family with two young boys who care about this community. I want to ensure that the community we're leaving tomorrow is better. As I said earlier, we're living under the conditions created by people that held office previously, prior, who voted to cause these things to happen to our people, to our jobs, to our businesses. And I do believe that they've had their turn. They've tried their shot at it, and the results speak for themselves. 12% unemployment here in Pueblo. And in the, uh, in the county, the, the Office of Labor Market Information put this out. The not employed rate is the percentage of individuals over 18 who are ready, willing, and able to be employed, but are unable to find employment as determined by the State Department of Labor. Pueblo County is at 20.9%. Castilla County, 23.56. Orfano, 21.78. Montrose, 20.66. Archuleta, 19.97. Dolores, 19.85. Fremont County, 19.66. That's Southern Colorado, folks. These are the people that I've worked with up and down the Arkansas River from Canyon City to Lamar. And I want to go to Denver and take care of these people in the way that they should be taken care of, not the way they have been taken care of. OK, we'll now have closing remarks. If you recall, the beginning, we said that Leroy would begin and then Jerry would conclude. So our first closing remark will be from Leroy. 
So I want to thank you again for being here. I want to especially thank the audience at home who's watching. I want to just share with you that, again, I care about this community because I chose to come back and live in this community. I was born and raised in this community, attended Risley Middle School and grew up on the east side. And I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I went to the Marine Corps because I needed an opportunity to go to college. And I didn't have the money to go to college. So I took an opportunity to enlist in the United States Marine Corps and serve for six years while I then went on. I came back to this community because it's the community that raised me. It's the community that cares about me and has helped in so many ways to come back and teach as a faculty member here at Public Community College where I teach pre-hospital emergency medical services. We have a family here, and in 2009, you elected me to serve you on Public City Council, and I believe and know that it was with your su support that we were successful. And I pledge to you tonight to continue that tradition of serving you, listening to you, accomplishing goals and tasks that are driven by you. So tonight, I thank you again for joining us. Wish you a great evening. Jerry? When the people vote to give me the privilege of exercising the responsibilities of representing House District 46, I will work to remove the government burdens, stumbling blocks, and obstacles so the people and their businesses can prosper again. I want to go up there and to work to relieve all of those conditions that have been placed on us down through the years by prior office holders and their uh, poor efforts at running our economy and taking care of our small businesses and our workers. This is one of the things that I look up and see my county, my city, my state going into hard times again. Folks, I don't want it to be that way again. And I guarantee you, when I get up there, I will be the hardest worker you have ever seen. This doesn't have to be the way we live in these conditions. I've seen hard times in Pueblo, and I do believe unless we get somebody up there that knows what needs to be done and can get it done, then we're going to have even harder times. And I don't want anybody in this city, county, or state eating oatmeal three times a day with nothing to put in it. I don't want those conditions to exist. I want the people to have the dignity of going to a job that they look forward to every day and earning a living wage so that they can support their families, pay their bills, put some money in the bank, and have spending money which drives our economy like nothing else can. I thank each and every one of you for being here, for the Chieftain for sponsoring this, and for all of you at home, hey, remember, there's. Don't bring anything to a job fight but a hard hat. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. That concludes our first forum. We're going to take a break, get a, a breath of fresh air, and then we'll be back in about five or ten minutes. Thank you. <laughs>